So I'm Kelsey Hightower. We're going to show you how to start managing your SSH configuration files using Puppet. We're going to take a look at using an existing system as a baseline. In order to get started using Puppet to manage something simple like SSH, one thing I like to do is write the bare minimal Puppet code. A lot of people, when they get started with Puppet, they think they have to build full-blown modules or manage the entire system. But in this case, we're going to take the approach of managing something small that adds value quickly. So what we're going to do is take a look at our modules for SSH. And what I have here is a very simple module. We start out with the class for SSH, and we're only managing two resources here. I like to start with managing the file. And if you notice, the attributes that we're managing are the ownership, the mode, and the source of our configuration file. One thing about Puppet that's nice is I can actually have a different SSH configuration file based on the operating system. If we move down to line number 15, you see that the source that I'm asking for is dependent on the operating system. These variables come from things called facts. And any changes to this configuration file will be pushed and automatically restart the SSH service that's dependent on this file. And the last resource that we're managing is the SSH service. We're ensuring that the service is always running and it's enabled, so if we reboot the system, SSH will always come up and be available. Let's take a look at the module directory to see what files are required for this to work. I'm going to type the tree command to show us what files are available. If you notice, we have nothing underneath our files directory, and this is what we're using for our source. So if we review our module again, we're specifying that the source comes from our SSH module, but that file does not exist. The thing I like to do is use an existing system for a baseline. So what I like to do is copy our SSH config from a running system. The command I'm going to use is a simple SCP command. We'll copy the SSH config from our agent system into the directory where our files live. I'm going to add the .debian extension to make sure that this configuration file is used on Debian systems. We'll run that, and our file should now be in place. If I run tree again, see if the file lives in the correct directory, the files directory underneath the SSH module. And we'll take a peek at the SSH config to see what it looks like out of the box. So in this example, what we want to do is use the PCI standards that recommend that individual users use their own system accounts to log in and gain admin privileges. To make this work, what we're going to do is disable root logins from our server. Before we make any changes, we're going to hop over to our agent and run Puppet to make sure there's no pending changes. All successful Puppet runs are captured with reports sent to our console. So when we click on our Nodes tab, we actually see reports. I'm going to look at our agent. Here we see there are no changes in the last run we just kicked off. And we'll also verify that I still have root access to our agent. So simply, I log in as root, and I have access to the system. But we don't want that to be the case. So what we'll do is on the master, we'll edit the SSH configuration file that we're using as a baseline. Here, I'm simply going to set permit root login to no. Once that's done, I simply save the file. And that's it. This Puppet module is ready to go. I can jump on the agent, and I'll run Puppet from the command line once again. At this point, Puppet's doing a check on the existing file and comparing it to the file we specified in our module. It notices that permit root login was equal to yes, and what our configuration specified that it should be no. We get this nice diff output on the command line showing us the changes that Puppet's going to make, and we also see down here that the SSH service has been restarted as a result. I can hop over to our other tab and see that root access is no longer allowed. Even though I attempt to type the password in, nothing happens. If I look at our console once again, and we can review the reports for the nodes, we see that we have one node that has changed. We click on an agent, and we can get more details about the report by clicking on the timestamp. And we get this same output that we saw on the command line broken out by specific fields of the events that happened. If I ever wanted to revert this back, I simply edit the same configuration file and switch the option back to yes. But we'll leave it at no for now. The nice thing about Puppet, if someone wants to go onto the box directly and change the configuration file, Puppet will manage automatically change it back to the specified configuration on our end. This is a nice way to automatically keep this file in compliance with our policy views already set. We'll run Puppet again, and we'll watch the magic happen. And every time Puppet makes a changes to our system, we always get a report. So this keeps you in the know when things happen without you knowing. As you can see from our simple example, using Puppet to manage a specific pain point like our SSH config is relatively easy. We basically wrote a simple module with two resources, a file and a service, 
and we just used an existing configuration file from my base system and made our changes from there. Puppet allows us to automate not only the configuration of SSH, but also allows us to enforce our specified policy.